Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi The topic today is sale of goods I've mentioned during our first class that the sale of goods is one of the example of contract So, in order for it to be valid, it must fulfill all the elements of a valid contract In other words, there must be all five elements of a valid contract including an offer, acceptance, consideration, intention, and capacity. The law that governs sale of goods is the Sale of Goods Act 1957. Before we proceed, we need to know the basic classification of property. Property can be divided to two types. <coughs> The first one is real property or immovable property, for example, like land, house, and etc. The second one is personal property or movable property, such as stationery, stable, computer. The reason we discuss the classification of property is because the goods in this context refers to sale of movable property only, as what it is stated in Section 2 of the Act. So, Section 2 defines what is the meaning of goods. Next, what are the types of goods? Section 6 divides goods to two types. Number 1, existing goods. Number 2, future goods. First, the existing goods, which means goods that are already in possession of the seller. Existing goods can be further divided to specific goods, barang tertentu, and unascertained goods, barang yang belum ditentukan. Specific goods are goods that are identifiable at the time of the contract is made. For example, let's say A enters into a contract to purchase a Mazda CX-5 with a registration number AA123 from B. Here, the good, i.e. the car, is identifiable at the time the contract is made. So, it is a specific good. Unascertained goods are goods that are not yet ascertained at the time when the contract is made. At the time the contract is made, parties only know the description of the goods. For example, A enters into a contract to buy 50 kg flour from B. Here we know the description of the good, i.e. 50 kg of flour. But it is still unascertained. Which flour? It will only be considered as specific goods after B scale and sold 50 kg of the flour and give it to A. Second is future goods. Future goods are goods that will be manufactured in the future after the contract is made. Meaning, the goods are yet to exist. For example, a enters into a contract to buy a new TV brand from B. The TV brand is yet to exist. It is not produced yet. But the contract is already made between A and B. So the TV is a future good. So we've discussed the definition of goods. Now, we will discuss the meaning of contract of sale. The definition can be found in Section 4 of the Act. Section 4 stated that a contract of sale of goods is a contract whereby the seller transfer or agrees to transfer the property in goods to the buyer for a price. There may be a contract of sale between one part owner and another. 
the important element in a contract of sale is the transfer of movable good from a seller to a buyer. So if the intention is to transfer the ownership of the goods, it is considered as a contract of sale. Contract of sale is different from a wage contract because of the different in intention. You can refer to the case of Lee versus Griffin, where in this case, the contract involves sale of dentures. This is considered as a sale of goods because the intention was to transfer the ownership from the dentist to the customer. Lastly, we will discuss the definition of price. The definition of price is stated in Section 2 of the Act as the money consideration for a sale of goods. So the consideration must be in a form of money. If not, it is considered as a contract of exchange, not a contract of sale. Okay, so we've discussed the definition of goods, sale of goods and price. Now let us discuss terms of contract. Once we enter into a contract of sale, there will be basic terms of the contract. The term might be expressly or impliedly stated in the contract. The purpose of the term is to protect the right of parties, especially the buyer. Terms of a contract can be divided to two. It can be either a condition or a warranty. This is stated in Section 12, Subsection 1 of the Act. Both condition and warranty can be either expressed or implied. Section 12, Subsection 2 of the Act defines what is a condition. Condition, or in Malay we call it as syarat, means stipulation essential to the purpose of the contract. It is the main stipulation of a contract or what we call syarat utama and breach of the condition will cause the contract to be repudiated. While section 12 subsection 3 of the act defines warranty as a supplement to the terms of the contract. Syarat sampingan in case of any breach, the innocent party can only claim damages and they cannot repudiate the contract. The next question is when breach of condition can be considered as breach of warranty. By virtue of section 13, subsection 1 of the Act, breach of condition is considered as breach of warranty when number one the buyer waives the condition or number two the buyer chooses to treat the breach of condition as breach of warranty second but section 13, subsection 2 states that breach of condition is considered as breach of warranty when the contract is not severable and the buyer has accepted the goods or part, meaning it cannot be separated or divided into parts. Number 2, when the goods are specific goods and the ownership has been transferred to a buyer. So in this situation, Breach of condition is considered as breach of warranty. The party entitled to claim for damages without having... You can refer to the case of Associated Metals Smelters Limited. In this case, the plaintiff claimed damages for breach of warranty
because the melting furnace did not get to the temperature of 2,600 degrees, as what was claimed by the defendant. The court held that this was a breach of condition. However, the court held that the plaintiff was entitled by virtue of Section 13, Subsection 1 of the Act to consider such breach as the breach of warranty. Like what I've mentioned before, both condition and warranty can be either express or implied. For the next part, we will discuss implied terms and warranty. Particularly, we will discuss number one, implied terms regarding payment time, number two, implied terms of ownership, number three, implied warranty as to the right of the buyer to enjoy quiet possession, and lastly, we will discuss implied warranty that the goods are free from charge or encumbrances. First, we will discuss implied terms regarding payment time. According to Section 11, stipulation as to the time of payment is not the essence of the contract of sale unless the parties stipulated otherwise. For example, let's say A enters into a contract with B to sell 10 computers. A did not state when the computers should be delivered. So in case of any breach of delivering the computers, it will not be considered as breach of condition. However, if A states state the time that the computers, the 10 computers, should be delivered, then in case of failure to deliver at the time that is stated, it will be considered as a breach of condition. So you can refer to the case of Harrington. Next is implied terms of ownership. Please refer to section 14, subsection A of the Act. According to this section, it is an implied condition that the seller must have the right to sell the goods at the time the goods are sold to the buyer. So, A enters into a contract of sale of a car with B. Here, there is an implied condition that B must have the ownership of the car. However, B, at the time of transferring the car, did not own it. The car belongs to C. In this situation, B has no right to sell the car to A. The case that illustrates this principle is the case of Lian Li Moto Syndrome Berhad. Please read the facts. Then, implied warranty as to the right of the buyer to enjoy quiet possession, as stated in Section 14, Subsection B of the Act. The rule is that there is an implied warranty that the buyer shall have the right to enjoy quiet possession of the goods, meaning the buyer can do anything with the good and the third party shall not interfere with the buyer's possession. You can refer to two cases, the case of Microbits and Healing Sales Private Limited. 